the level of recorded serious crime has actually fallen since Love Hate began in 2010. Yes, Primetime finally nuked the fridge this week when they decided to completely ignore the difference between fact and fiction in a barefaced attempt to get ratings. As the latest series of Love Hate comes to an end, we look at the reality of the criminal underworld. And tonight we ask, to what extent does this fictional crime drama reflect the reality of gangland? Reality? Drama. This is a mouse. <laughs> this is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> See the difference? It surely smacks of desperation when a program tries to cash in so shamelessly on Love Hates audience's success. Uh, get your hands off me, friend, you go. You're supposed to be hurt. You're supposed to be hurt. Shame on you, prime time. Robberies, extortion and hijackings are all down by more than 10%. And murder, attempted murder, burglaries and harassment have also declined. But that's not quite the impression we get from watching Love Hate. It's five years of austerity budgets, unemployment and immigration at record highs. But that's not quite the impression we get from watching Downton Abbey. <laughs> yes, the primetime piece soon struggled to know whether it was using a top-rated drama to examine serious social issues or just a TV review. Bran is very good now. Very, very good, you know. He's out there with the dogs, he's fighting the dogs, he's no emotions. This man is what you call a real criminal. Real mouse, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but by the end, Miriam's grasp on reality was beginning to slip. You spend your whole time, don't you, trying to stop them turning into ninjas? You're right, Miriam. Nobody wants their kids to turn out like this. And the winner is Tom Vaughan. We've an amazing crew and a brilliant ensemble of actors, so I'd like to accept this on behalf of the uh, Love Hate Company. His poor, poor mother. <laughs> Next week, Primetime continues this series, asking what lessons the Minister for Education needs to learn from this programme. Right